Is this thing on? <laughs> uh, hello, um, I'm Eric Stenman. Uh, I'm here tonight to talk about a very unusual project uh, that we're working on with, with uh, the office I come from, Eli Um And th this project uh, that you can see uh, an image of here right on the screen uh, is uh, not too far from here, it's in Kiruna. Uh, and this is a city that's um, under very severe pressure, uh, given that there's pressure from the deformation in the ground, which it's standing on, and also somehow in the networks that, that fuel this transformation. And it's a very intimate tie between those two things. So that, th what I'm gonna talk about is a little bit how we're planning that, what does it mean to make such a plan, how can it be both resilient and somehow flexible, uh, what does that mean? Uh, what kind of ideas uh, revolve around that? And I've sort of, uh, I've, 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 I've uh, called this transitional urbanism, uh, moving the city of Kiruna, in that this idea of moving uh, automatically gives us the sort of interesting challenge of thinking of the city as an organism, a socio-economic organism, if you like, uh, something that moves, something that lives and breathes, and something that includes living forms. Um, but there's something in these transitions that's really, really interesting. And it's also where we can leave marks in the built environment and, and, and make something special. So I'm gonna flip to the next image here, see if this works. Uh, uh, so here it is. Um, and, and first of all, Kiruna really exists because of the mind. I mean, there's been uh, uh, Sami people and nomadic cultures in these lands for some you know, thousands of years. Uh, but it wasn't until the mine came along that, that, it, it, that it started to get an, let's say an urban footprint. It started to develop into something. And you can see here um, a, a picture of, 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 of what is called downtown. It's 20,000 people or so. And, and in the background, uh, Kirunavara, which is, is the, the sort of mother of this city. Um, and this city and the mine, of course, they don't consume all this iron ore that they're producing themselves. So it's always tied to a global condition. It's always tied to the world, what's going on. Um, and uh, uh, currently, um, in, in the EU, we're, we're, we're uh, consuming quite a lot of iron ore, 20% uh, uh, or so of the whole, whole uh, world's uh, amount. Uh, and, 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 and El Coabe, which is the company, is, is producing a lot of that. Uh, but EU is producing quite little, so there's pressure on these areas to, to, to pick it up. Um, and 80% uh, of, of what, uh, what we're producing in Kiruna is shipped off to, to um, China. And uh, they have a very neat transportation, very beautiful transportation system that takes the iron ore over to, to Narvik in Norway, um, where they've invested about a billion Swedish crowns in, in trying to sort of really um, uh, smoothen things out to make perfect logistics for shipping uh, 30 million tons out every year. Um, so that's an awful amount of, uh, an amazing amount of, of, of iron ore. Um, and in this shipping, uh, we're starting to see all kinds of changes. We, everybody knows uh, the ice is melting and new things start to emerge. Um, we're talking a lot about this northern route, uh, with what, what, uh, what uh, Putin called the Suez of the North, uh, that will reduce the, the time of transportation about 40%. So it's quite substantial, it's kind of a big deal. Um, and, and, and the Russians are already um, uh, using these atomic icebreakers and them being hungry for transportation. They're, 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 uh, they've been doing this for a couple of years, trying to, to exploit this northern route. Um, but soon it will open more if, if things go the way it seems. Uh, so here, of course, when we look at all these resources that are up there, we're really starting to look at a thing that used to be back door will be a kind of a front door condition. Uh, so here is Kiruna uh, in Sweden in the middle of such an, a field, a 
with, with, the, with the kind of red, um, with the pink islands being uh, mineral uh, findings, uh, a lot of them, and another couple of cities around them. Um, and all cities are not moving according to this. The, the Swedish state relies heavily on, on mining, as um, some of these cities, like Manberget, uh, next to it, is, 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 um, is not being moved. It's basically being just dug away. This is modestly called uh, Gropen, uh, which means the pit, uh, but it's basically eating the whole thing. To further this kind of conflict, we also see that, that on top of all these, uh, these minerals, we've got Sami trails and old uh, roots that they used for, for breeding reindeers. And that is, um, there's a lot of conflict and, and, and difficult uh, things there. And here's a beautiful picture of, of these indigenous people herding those reindeers. Um, so this is just a few examples of, of, of these kinds of things that are, are shaping this uh, discussion. And it's not working. There it is. So, so here is, uh, um, uh, um, I mean, in this discussion about all these workings in the land, we're also seeing that this is happening a lot. Uh, we're, we're, we're somehow entering this age of, of the Anthropocene, um, and I'm speeding up a little bit here now. I, finally, here is Kiruna, um, very much a, a city that, that is part of this Anthropocene uh, uh, condition. Uh, lakes have been emptied, the big mine there, um, and, and here's another one with uh, showing from the actual um, mountain cutting through. So this really is the, the, the biggest iron ore um, un, um, mine in the world. And you can see people living next to the mine. Uh, there's a skiing slope and a big dip next to it. And what, what we're looking at is, is this situation right here is that there's um, there is a, 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 a two kilometer or, or three kilometer deep, nobody really knows, a deep iron ore body that's, that's cutting through the city and making the, the uh, deformation, the, the, the ground deform under the city. And that thing is huge. And on a daily basis, these guys carve out something like six and a half Eiffel Towers. So that's how much iron ore they're doing. Um, and. Uh, a lot of residue, and a lot of residue, and lots and lots of tunnels, uh, hundreds of kilometers of tunnels. Uh, and in 2004, uh, this is the mining company right here, it's trying to say, this is gonna start to affect us, uh, really. Um, this, this is, uh, in the next 20 years or so, we're gonna have problems. Um, you can see the deformation of the ground coming closer and closer, and here, um, you can see a, a kind of a map of the deformation coming closer and closer. We're going up to 2,100 here. So it's really um, uh, the decision was to say, we're keeping the mine, but the city has to go. And this is a picture of that city uh, and, and, how, and, and the presence of that mine very close to it. Uh, here is the Kiranovara site. And they decided to do this competition, and we participated and collaborated with uh, White Architects from Stockholm and Spacecape. And uh, we, we, uh, we proposed uh, not to move the city, uh, rather kind of grow the city in a different direction. Um, and we believe in the city, so we call this proposal Kiruna Forever. Um, but it means to, to establish a growth direction that's perpendicularly away from the mine. So here we see uh, all these uh, urban areas, and we're sort of growing attached in between these already existing parts. And as a tool for this idea, uh, we've, we've, we've laid out a, a much longer time span than we, we thought we'd, they were, ex were talking about 2033, but we really wanted to expand, extend that to 2100 to see that, that you, you, you're going to understand this thing as a, as a process, as a living thing, and there's life beyond 2033. How far is that deformation going to get? So we divided it up in these different categories that all have 
it, it's, 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 it's a bit of a systemic approach, but they all sort of have a, 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 an agenda. Uh, so in we're, we're working very tightly with the landscape. We're carving in um, the city, and we're making moves that that that, that gives you always uh, a very close relationship to the to the landscape. It's carving into the center of it. Uh, we're 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 both working with the reforming land and what's coming after. Um, the mobility is, is an important aspect. We're, we're, we're connecting. Everything is growing out of existing infrastructure uh, and making a new weave towards the east. And here is a street that, um, a future shopping street or something like that. Um, and in, in these junctions, we've got a system of programs uh, and what we call economies that we can, we can structure the city's development on. Um, the first one now being the, the, the square, which is, 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 being, is happening very soon. And here you can see, I'm running on there. And this is uh, the square, which is, is, uh, is well on the way. Uh, the, the, the city hall, which will be the first building that moves. Uh, we're working with the new density uh, in order to fit everything in. And, and very importantly, we're also working very closely with, a, with an idea of, of establishing dialogue between all the people and bringing them along. And we've developed three sort of different tools, a, a, a dialogue and a an, uh, biannual exhibition thing, and also a kind of a building space, like a, like a giant hall where you can actually um, you take all building parts and, and systematize this tran transformation process. And this is also considered a kind of a public space, a project office for the whole for the whole city. That also includes categorizing and mapping all kinds of bits and parts and making it um, uh, a part of this whole um, process in a, in, a, in a way that you can actually bring with you the identity of the place. So you've got layers and stuff that you're afraid to lose if you're just, if you're just um, building everything from scratch. So here, this church, for instance, will be moved. Um, well, this city hall will not be. And there are bits and pieces. We're taking the clock tower and reintroducing that. But, but it's really quite important that people are, are brought along and, and are part of the process. We're also suggesting to bring all kinds of little bits and pieces that could pot potentially go through this, this portal uh, and bring more layers to the city that's being developed. This, of course, is a very, very complex uh, process, and everything is structured in timelines. So this is a bit of a, an example of that. Um, but ultimately, we're looking at a situation where potentially that's going to wipe everything out. Uh, this is in 2100 or so. Uh, so the, the plan is flexible. It can stretch and become something else. And here is a quick morph or such a thing. And I'm just going to leave you with this final slide that is a scenario of what it might look like, what it might not look like. It's about talking of the deformed ground. What, what comes of that? What comes of this digging all over the world? How do you relate to such things? Um, we leave that, that in this um, uh, process of developing things, you actually uh, need to look at these thresholds. And, and see the sequence of things and start to make um, ideas that really count, that makes this a city with qualities more than just something very generic. Thank you very much. <laughs>